Welcome to the Pencil Bob channel I hope you enjoy the story. Remember to like and subscribe and now the story. The acrid stench of sulfur hung heavy in the air, a constant reminder of the inferno that raged just beyond the veil. Father Matthias clutched the crucifix in his hand, the silver burning hot against his palm. Below him, the once pristine plaza of St. Michael's Cathedral was a scene from a nightmare. Grotesque figures, all claws and razor sharp teeth, tore through the fleeing parishioners. Their obsidian eyes burned with an unholy hunger. These were no ordinary demons. They were Abaddon's elite, the Harbingers, and their arrival heralded the beginning of the end war. For millennia, the celestial war between heaven and hell had raged, a silent conflict contained within the unseen realms. But something had shifted, a tear in the fabric of reality, and the demons had spilled through. Matthias, once a mild-mannered priest, had become a reluctant warrior. Years ago, he'd witnessed a demonic incursion, a baptism by fire that had forged his faith into steel. Now, as the last line of defense, he roared a prayer, his voice hoarse from disuse. A shimmering blade materialized in his hand, holy light coursing through the etched symbols. He cut a swath through the demonic horde, each swing fueled by righteous fury. But for every harbinger he felled, two more seemed to take its place. Panic surged through him, a cold dread that threatened to consume him. Then, a voice cut through the chaos. Father Matthias, he turned to see Sister Clara, her eyes blazing with a holy fire. Her once gentle demeanor was replaced by a warrior's resolve, a longsword clutched in her hand. Together, they fought back to back, a whirlwind of steel and faith. Yet, the tide of the battle remained overwhelmingly in favor of the demons. Suddenly, a guttural roar echoed through the plaza. A hulking figure, taller than any building, emerged from the swirling vortex in the sky. Its obsidian skin pulsed with an infernal glow, and horns like twisted spears adorned its head. This was Abaddon himself, the Lord of Hell, and his arrival signaled the true beginning of the apocalypse. Fear threatened to cripple Matthias, but a hand gripped his shoulder. It was Clara, her voice steely. We fight, Father, until our last breath. Their faith reignited, they charged towards Abaddon, their blades glowing with celestial light. The demon swatted them aside with contemptuous ease, sending them flying across the plaza. Matthias slammed into a fallen pillar, his vision blurring. He tasted blood, a metallic tang that filled his mouth. As he lay there, his body screaming in protest, he saw a figure descend from the heavens. Clothed in shimmering white armor, a being of pure light, it landed gracefully between them and Abaddon. It was Michael, the archangel, his face a mask of righteous anger. The following battle defied description. Michael, a whirlwind of celestial fury, clashed with Abaddon, the very air crackling with raw power. The ground trembled, buildings crumbled, and the remaining parishioners huddled in doorways, their screams drowned out by the clash of titans. Matthias watched, hope flickering within him, but even Michael seemed overwhelmed. Abaddon fought with the fury of a cornered beast, his blows raining down with devastating force. Slowly, he began to push Michael back, a cruel smile twisting his demonic features. Just as despair threatened to consume Matthias once more, a new sound filled the air. A chorus of voices, rising from the city beyond the cathedral. It was the voice of the people, raised in a song of defiance, a hymn of faith. The sound pulsed with a radiant energy a beacon of hope in the encroaching darkness. Empowered by this collective faith, Michael rallied. He unleashed a blinding flash of holy light that momentarily staggered Abaddon. Then, with a roar that shook the very foundations of the city, he plunged his celestial sword deep into the demon lord's chest. Abaddon shrieked, a sound that chilled Matthias to the bone. But the wound glowed with an unholy light, and with a final, earth-shattering roar, the demon lord dissolved into a cloud of inky black smoke. The vortex above them flickered and then snapped shut, severing the connection between hell and earth. The remaining harbingers, deprived of their master's power, faltered. Michael, his armor dented and bloodied, raised a hand. With a word of command, the demons were banished back to the fiery depths from whence they came. Silence descended upon the ravaged city. The air, still thick with the stench of sulfur, slowly began to clear. Michael turned to the battered and bruised humans, a weary smile gracing his lips. 
you fought well, he boomed, his voice echoing through the ruined plaza. Your faith is your shield, your hope your weapon. Never falter, for the war is far from over. The victory tasted bittersweet, the streets were littered with the dead, both human and demonic. Father Matthias, his body a canvas of aches and pains, surveyed the destruction with numb horror. Sister Clara, her once pristine white robes stained crimson, limped beside him. Days bled into weeks amidst the chaos of rebuilding. The living mourned their dead, the air thick with a potent blend of grief and fear. Matthias found solace in tending the wounded, his prayers a soothing balm for their shattered spirits. Clara, ever the pragmatist, organized the remaining men into patrols to ward off any stray demons who might linger. One week after the battle, an unearthly glow emanated from the cathedral ruins. Matthias and Clara, hearts pounding in their chests, cautiously approached the source. In the heart of the devastation, a single charred beam remained upright, casting an eerie shadow upon a metallic object nestled at its base. It was a book, its cover an intricate design of celestial and demonic figures locked in eternal combat. As they picked it up, the book pulsed with a faint light. Images flickered before their eyes, visions of a fractured world, a desolate landscape overrun by demonic hordes. Then, a voice, ancient and powerful, echoed in their minds. The war is not won, merely delayed. Abaddon is but a pawn in a larger game. The true enemy stirs, and the veil between realms weakens. The voice belonged to Metatron, the celestial scribe. He spoke of a prophecy, a being of immense power called the Firstborn, imprisoned at the heart of hell. If freed, it would consume both heaven and earth, plunging the universe into eternal darkness. The revelation left them reeling. What was a localized conflict had become an existential struggle. They shared the prophecy with Michael, who appeared before them. His brow furrowed in concern. This changes everything, he said, his voice grave. You, Matthias and Clara, have been chosen as the instruments of fate. This book, the Codex Infernus, holds the key to sealing the firstborn once more. The responsibility weighed heavily on them. They were mere humans, thrust into a cosmic war. Fear warred with determination within Matthias. Clara, however, met the challenge head on. Then we train, she declared, her voice unwavering. Thus began their arduous training. Michael, though weary from the recent battle, pushed them relentlessly. They learned to channel their faith into weapons of light, to tap into the latent power within themselves. Days blurred into nights, their bodies screaming in protest, their minds constantly grappling with the enormity of the task before them. Weeks turned into months, their bond grew, forged in the crucible of shared purpose. Matthias, the once timid priest, emerged as a leader. His faith hardened into unwavering resolve. Clara, the ever-pragmatic warrior, discovered a depth of spiritual strength she never knew existed. One fateful night, the Codex Infernus pulsed with a sinister energy. A map materialized on its worn pages, a path through the fiery depths of hell, leading directly to the firstborn's prison. It's time, Michael said, his voice heavy with sadness. The fate of creation rests on your shoulders. With a heavy heart, Matthias and Clara stepped into a shimmering portal, the stench of sulfur assaulting their nostrils as they entered the fiery realm. The landscape was a twisted parody of the world above, a burning wasteland populated by grotesque creatures that screamed in defiance. Each step they took was a trial, the relentless heat threatening to consume them. They battled their way through hordes of lesser demons, their faith the only shield against the encroaching darkness. They witnessed unspeakable horrors, each sight further fueling their determination. Finally, after days of relentless struggle, they reached a colossal obsidian fortress, the prison of the firstborn. Its walls pulsed with an otherworldly energy, threatening to shatter their minds. With a deep breath, they channeled their faith, their bodies glowing with an ethereal light as they breached the fortress walls. Inside, they found a colossal, chained figure, its form shifting and melding into a nightmarish tapestry of horrors. It was the firstborn, and the dormant power emanating from it threatened to overwhelm them. The Codex Infernus pulsed in Clara's hand, revealing the ritual needed to re-imprison the entity. It was a complex ceremony requiring perfect coordination and unwavering faith. They began the chant, 
their voices weaving a tapestry of celestial energy that battled the firstborn's chaotic aura. The air crackled with raw power. The fortress around them trembled, threatening to collapse. The firstborn writhed in fury, its screams resonating through the very fabric of reality. Just as they neared the completion of the ritual, a harrowing cry pierced the air. A hulking figure materialized from the shadows, cloaked in darkness. It was Abaddon, resurrected and fueled by an unholy rage. You dare trespass in my domain? Abaddon boomed, his voice a guttural rasp that echoed through the fortress. His obsidian eyes burned with unholy hatred, fixated on the two humans daring to defy him. Fear threatened to consume Matthias, but Clara's steely gaze met his. A silent exchange passed between them, a shared determination to see their mission through. We are not yours to command, demon, Clara spat, her voice resonating with defiance. Her blade, wreathed in holy light, hummed in anticipation. Abaddon let out a humorless chuckle. Foolish mortals, you think your petty tricks can contain the firstborn? He raised a hand, unleashing a torrent of dark energy towards them. Matthias, fueled by righteous fury, met the attack head on. He raised the Codex Infernus, its celestial script glowing with an intensity that rivaled Abaddon's dark energy. The two forces collided in a blinding flash, momentarily pushing Abaddon back. The respite was brief. Abaddon, enraged by the unexpected resistance, charged forward. A battle unlike any other unfolded within the Obsidian Fortress. Michael, sensing the renewed threat, projected his voice into the chamber. Finish the ritual, mortals! I will hold Abaddon at bay for as long as I can. Renewed resolve surged through Matthias and Clara. They danced around Abaddon's furious attacks, their movements a blur of faith and steel. Each chant, each gesture of the ritual, pushed them closer to completing their task. Abaddon, frustrated by Michael's interference and the growing power emanating from the humans, unleashed another devastating attack. The air crackled with chaotic energy, threatening to sever the connection between Matthias and Clara. Clara saw the danger first, with a desperate cry. She pushed Matthias aside, taking the full brunt of Abaddon's assault. She screamed, a horrifying sound that echoed through the chamber, before being flung across the room, her body limp. Despair threatened to overwhelm Matthias, but Clara's sacrifice fueled a righteous fury within him. He poured every ounce of his remaining faith into the ritual, the words leaving his throat raw and ragged. Just as Abaddon lunged towards the incapacitated Clara, intending to deliver the final blow, the chamber vibrated violently. The ritual reached its climax, casting a blinding light that engulfed the firstborn. Chains of celestial energy materialized, binding the entity and dragging it back into its prison. The very walls of the fortress groaned in protest before crumbling inwards, burying the firstborn beneath tons of obsidian. Weak and battered, Matthias stumbled towards Clara. Relief washed over him as he saw her chest rise and fall, shallow but steady. He cradled her head in his lap, whispering prayers of healing. Abaddon, weakened by the ritual's conclusion, roared in defiance. However, with the firstborn sealed, he seemed to lose his source of power. His once imposing form began to shrink, the darkness around him dissipating. With a final, impotent scream, he dissolved into a cloud of ash. Michael materialized beside them, his celestial armor dimmed but his gaze filled with admiration. You did well, mortals, he said, his voice filled with a hint of weariness. You have saved not just your world, but all of creation. Days later, Matthias and Clara emerged from the crater that had been the Obsidian Fortress. The world above, once a ravaged cityscape, was bathed in the warm glow of the rising sun. The air, while still scarred by the recent battle, felt clean and fresh. As they surveyed the rebuilding efforts, a sense of bittersweet accomplishment settled over them. They had witnessed horrors beyond comprehension, lost friends, and forever changed. Yet, they had also discovered a strength and faith within themselves they never knew existed. The war with hell was far from over, but for now, there was a fragile peace. Matthias and Clara, forever bound by their shared ordeal, knew their journey was just beginning. They were no longer mere mortals, but guardians, forever vigilant against the encroaching darkness. They had stared into the abyss, and the abyss had blinked. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end.
to encourage us to make more videos. Please. Like. Subscribe. Comment. As well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.